Hello everyone, how's it going? This is the Average Guy 1983. Today I would like to do an unboxing for you guys of the Bionic TV Links. This is a um, portable HDMI uh, adapter plug for the or adapter dock for the Nintendo Switch. And the reason why I was looking for something like this product was for my own vehicle. I have a 2019 Ford Flex SCL and I have the uh, Xtron's HM131 HD. 13.3 inch uh, displays I have four of them and I figured it would be really cool to have my own personal Nintendo switch since I have over like 60 games in the console and I figured it would be great considering the size of the screens you can be able to play things like Mario Kart in a four player split screen and everybody would have a decent sized screen to uh, to be able to see themselves playing and I thought it would be great to have something like that in the car. And I tried it out already without this product, with the, just the standard dock. And it does actually work. The only problem is that the dock is so big and there's nowhere in the car to place it at for it can, so that it can stay stable. So I was looking for something similar to this, or basically like this, where I can have just the, um, the console itself and my cubby right next to or my armrest cubby that's right next to my uh, Roku Ultra that I have connected, have the HDMI wire running from that same area down to the HDMI switcher, and then have this uh, adapter plugged into that 115 volt plug that's uh, located on the armrest in the back area on the, on the second row of the Flex. And um, I haven't unboxed it yet, but I did have the opportunity to... Um, have this product already tried out on my regular TV and it worked but the concern was that the adapter had this weird smell of burning prior to even connecting it to the wall and something inside was rattling when I moved the um, the little uh, adapter around and I was really concerned about it plus I, it was sold to me like a brand new product and it had the seal uh, broken from the bottom where it looked like it was a return and they just resealed it because there was damage to the plastic or the, to the product on the bottom here. But anyways, let's go ahead and get to these specs real quick so you guys can see what it is. So exactly like it shows here, you have a one foot HDMI cable that's coming out of the Bionic um, adapter, which I'm a little concerned about the one foot. I kind of wish it was like 1.5 feet or two feet for my application, but it might actually work. Then you have a three foot cable going from the end of this adapter to your Nintendo Switch and then a longer five foot run going to your power adapter, which is great. Now, the cool part about this TV link, uh, Bionic TV link, is that they're using the same exact specs as the Nintendo Switch uh, dock adapter that's 15 volts, three amps for this device here, uh, for this adapter. So I think that we're going to actually be in good hands and not have any problems of my Switch getting bricked. But, um, Here's what it looks like, and you can go ahead and pause the video here so you can read all of this here. Now we're going to go ahead and move to the opposite side so you can see how the um, the box looks. And it shows here, it says support 1080p resolution, dynamic power adapter, HDMI connection, durable braided cable, and captive cable management, which is pretty nice. So let's go ahead and take a look inside. And this is the actual product inside. And as you can see, here's my hand. And this is very compact. And I think this is a great solution for like in-car use instead of just having a regular Nintendo Switch uh, adapter that plugs into your cigarette lighter where only you can use it connected to your, to your Nintendo Switch for power and just have one little Switch, you know, in portable mode when i have the tvs that i have in my car and i would like for four people to play at the same time i think this is the best solution but um yeah here's the other part here just so you can take a really good look not to be confused don't switch these out because maybe that's what the uh what happened to the other one in the bottom you can see what uh is supplied And then it seems like the seals in the bottom here, it looks like a double seal, but it doesn't look like it's been tampered with. So that's a good sign. Same thing at the top. So this looks great. Let's go ahead and uh, grab a knife and open it up. 
Alrighty guys, so I have um, already used a little knife to be able to get the um, box going, um, opened. So now let's go ahead and uh, get to this unboxing. So let's see exactly what you get in this box for the price of $69.99. So yeah, $69.99 is a lot, but hopefully this works good. It looks good so far. Let me do the smell test. Smells good so far. Ah, I was right. Okay, remember how I told you that the um, I had tried out another product and the power adapter smelled burnt and then something inside was rattling? Well, this one doesn't smell burnt and nothing is rattling on it. So, here you go. So this is definitely um, good. And here's the specs on this adapter, just in case you're wondering what it is. The output is 15 volts at one amp and five volts at 2.4 amps. So the 15 amp part is for the actual dock itself. The five volts, 2.4 amps is for the uh, USB inputs or outputs for um the dock to be able to charge your stuff and uh that's why you have three ports you have one in the back that's a usb 3.0 and then you have two on the side that are the standard usb 2.0 ones so um this should definitely be um a go on here but there you have it and there's a plug there. So let's go ahead and finish up this here. Put this to the side and check this out. So this definitely doesn't look like it's been uh, tampered with, even though it looks like a little dirty there, but it's actually sealed. It could have been from the manufacturer because this smells new and the wires don't look tampered with at all. Everything is there, the caps for these wires. They're all there. So basically your Nintendo Switch would get plugged into this wire. So one foot is actually pretty long. It's not that short if you kind of see there. It's a pretty long cable. So this might actually work because my plan is to put this inside of my cubby. Have this wire connected to my HDMI splitter or switcher that I have inside of the car that automatically switches from the switch to my Roku Ultra whenever the devices are off. If I power this device off, for example, if I power off the switch, it'll automatically switch over to the Roku that stays on at all times. And then you have the, uh, here it tells you right here, and there's an icon there for the adapter part, not to get confused. That's probably what happened to the other guy who returned this product. He probably messed up. And then here, is the cable that goes to the actual switch so this side is supposed to be five feet and this side here is supposed to be three feet so um we're gonna go ahead and um connect it real quick to my personal nintendo switch and then connect it to the tv uh, i have an lg oled e6 um 4k tv and we're gonna see how it does and this is the length which is about seven inches or so. The length of the uh, strap cable, you can just get your cables here, like this, and then just strap them together. And the strap should be large enough to cover this cable. And yeah, there you go. This is freaking awesome. The fact that it's this small and you can use this as a replacement charging dock uh, is pretty cool. Now. It does have its limitations like you guys already see here. You can plug in additional USB ports to like charge Joy-Cons. So you'll have to use your Nintendo Switch uh, with the um, with the Joy-Cons connected to the actual console itself. And then um, go from there to charge them up. But um, this is still a cool idea to be permanent in my car. And um, we're going to definitely plug it in in there and then test it out and see how it does live. So I think this is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and uh, plug this into the TV and we'll get back to the video. 
Alrighty, gentlemen and ladies, uh, or ladies and gentlemen, we have the wire connected already, as it says directed. And the cool part about it is that even if you were to tear this label off, you have the icon in the back that tells you where the uh, cable goes connected to. Uh, same thing for the power adapter that's right over there. So I have my wife's Nintendo Switch there in the dock. It's literally inside over there. And um, I disconnected her so I can be able to plug in mine into her input on the TV. And then we have, excuse the mess, but um, we have the HDMI adapter already plugged in right there. And uh, the TV is literally on right now. This is an LG OLED 65 inch E6 model from uh, 2016. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in my dock right now. So let me go ahead and uh, put my stuff here and plug in the dock as if you were docking it. There it is, it's plugged in. Okay, it detected charge, so that's perfect. I have my two Joy-Cons here and we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and switch the input. There we go. We are going to switch the input right now on here to the switch or basically whatever it says here, not Roku, Oppo, because that's the line I ended up connecting it to. So here we go. See if it'll plug in. There we go. And it's working. So there you have it. Let's go ahead and uh, get into this. And you can hear audio. So let me just go ahead and turn it up real quick. Because you guys need to make sure that you check this out here. There you go. Gonna go to my profile. And it should literally work. Well, it is working technically. You already heard this heard the sound. Okay. Well, there you have it. It's working perfect on my 65 inch uh, TV. There's no color uh, issues with the color or issues with the picture quality. Everything is working good and looking clean. So um, I say this is a pretty good wrap and this is a really good alternative to the uh, charging dock that's for the Nintendo Switch that you see there. So this isn't bad, it looks great. So let's go ahead and uh, unplug all of this here. We're gonna plug it into the car um, after I wire it up and we're gonna see how it does in there. So let's get to that part and make sure that we can accomplish this goal. Alrighty everyone, so this is my uh, 2019 Ford Flex SEL. And I've done a lot of upgrades into this car, including installing this big 13.3 inch uh, full 1080p displays. And I have them connected to a Roku Ultra. Uh, let me show you guys the back. This is from the third row, where I also have two more in here connected. And I'm going to show you guys where I have my Roku Ultra, which is... Go ahead and move my uh, tripod here real quick. And where I'm planning on connecting the switch. So my plan is to connect the switch to this area right here where I have my Roku Ultra. And um, it doesn't interrupt anything. I had to make a hole in the bottom down there in order to uh, be able to run the wire through. See how there's a hole there? I had to make a hole right there to be able to run the HDMI wire. So my plan is to have that USB uh, type C cord connected or coming out from this spot here and have the switch um, just hanging around in here and um, use this um, this plug here right in this area here use this plug 110 not 115 use this plug for the adapter for this part here and then um, have my um, my um 
the rest of the cable connected to that black cable there where the IP, I, I, IP thing that you see there have it connected to that line for the HDMI switcher which goes into my uh, other TVs that you see there that are all connected through HDMI so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this part started wire it up and then it's just running the cables through because obviously this is already connected it already has everything plugged into it it's just running the wire so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then we're gonna start up the car and have all the displays on and see if it actually works with the switch docked so let's get to that okay so just in case you're wondering how I have everything wired up this is how I have it so I have an IIIP um, HDMI splitter you have one input and four outputs connected in five volts uh, two amps and it's connected to this insignia adapter that I ended up cutting in half so I would just use this part and not the rest and then you have the um, mono price uh, HDMI switcher there that I just disconnected underneath in the bottom there I have all the lines for the Roku Ultra as well as the um, four TVs that I have connected into the car so it's just running the wire underneath here into the cubby where you kind of can see the wires sticking out from there I just have to wire it up from there and have the wires sticking out so I can get the switch connected so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and then uh, put everything here back and then we can go ahead and test out the switch so let's do that right now Alrighty everyone, so the cables are in now, so just so you guys can see here, that uh, cable run there, that's for the HDMI wire, there's the uh, the little dongle for the Bionic um, TV links right there on the side, this cable is the one that's sticking out from the side of the console for the uh, power adapter that's going to be plugged in right here for now, I do intend to get something similar to this plug to um, connect with the socket through the same wiring that I have here for the TVs that can turn on with ignition so that I can have more of a cleaner look and just put it in here as um, no one's ever going to be using this cubby which is the whole reason why I install all the wiring in here so now I can go ahead and close this up just like that no one's ever going to see that we can go ahead and plug in this adapter right here just like that so it's plugged in there now and then we can just go ahead and connect the USB adapter right in here. There you go. And that's it for the adapter. And now let's go ahead and uh, come on over to the other side because this wire here that I have for the switch is no longer needed. And then we're going to start the car after I bring in my switch, plug it in and uh, see from there how everything works out so inside of here again it's like I mentioned before here's the wire I have it running through so if I move these papers and straws that I have for my little kids I can go ahead and show you guys how I have the cables running so here we go this is how it looks like and the switch is going to be in there now the reason why I want to put it in here is because it does have some air vents that need to not be blocked out. The back of the switch, those two little holes that you have in the back with little tiny holes on there, those are the air vents that suck in cool air. And the top part of the switch where you usually remove your cartridge is the area that um, removes all the hot air like an exhaust. So I need to make sure that I have that cleared just like this Roku here, same issue. and. Um, once I have it plugged in, in this area here, we shouldn't have any connection problems either. So let's go ahead and bring the switch over, plug her in, start the car, get all these TVs up and running, and see if, it everything, if everything works out. So let's get to it, guys. Alright guys, so here's one of the reasons why I had mentioned about the Nintendo Switch not being blocked off or like putting it into something like a cubby like that, or not a cubby, but like a pocket. Because the back of the Nintendo Switch here has these uh, air vents that suck in cool air into the system to keep it cool and then the uh, the top part of the system next to your cartridge slot this area here takes all that hot air out of the system to keep it running cool so this is why I don't recommend you putting it into something like that but something into like the large cubby hole that I have 
in that little area there uh, it would be a much better uh, idea so let's go ahead and plug it in right now there we go now the intention is just to plug in the switch and then have it um, connected to this uh, cable so let me do that real quick let me put the phone down and I'll plug it in because I can't do it with one hand all right and we're back the switch is not plugged in like you guys see already here and all we're gonna do now is just turn the switch this way like this and have it just sitting there just like that and it won't move from its spot you see that it's like really stuck on there it won't actually move because the Roku Ultra that I have is actually helping it stay in place it doesn't block the vents in the back or the vent at the top and if I do need to open it up I will do that but uh, this should definitely work now that it's plugged in let's go ahead and uh, put this tripod on the dock on the well this uh, phone on the tripod <laughs> and test out the video footage All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna start up the um, the flex and turn on all the TVs, and then we'll get to this video. All righty, guys. As you guys can see, all the TVs are on and they're connected currently to my Roku Ultra, so everything's running here. And we're gonna go ahead and switch it over to the Nintendo Switch dock, and it should automatically adjust itself. So we're gonna see if it does it. Alrighty guys, now for the moment of truth, I have my Joy-Cons, I'm about to turn it on. And it should automatically switch. If it doesn't, I could always push the button and switch it myself. Since it didn't do it, let's go ahead and press the button. And switch it over to the switch. And I should have a signal coming through them. Though it says no signal. I'm not sure why it says that. Let me see if I can figure out what's going on. Hold on for me real quick guys. And we'll get back to this video. Alright there we go. I just had to switch the polarity of that uh, USB adapter. But here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, start this thing up here. And everything's working so far and this is using my two joy cons that I have here alrighty and that's it working so everything works You see the other TV working back there? Here's the other TVs in the back. And that is uh, the Nintendo Switch officially working with the Bionic TV Links and a 2019 Ford Flex SEL using the Xtron's HM 131HD full 1080p, display, uh, 1080p displays. And uh, there you have it. So now anybody in the vehicle using a small Joy-Con or Pro Controller can now play these games in a four uh, player mode in a split screen. With the screens being 13.3 uh, inches, that's plenty of footage divided in the screen. So there you have it. And it's connected through a FM radio for uh, an FM transmitter that's connected to that TV up there. And that's it. So now everything works. Thank you guys for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hey guys, real quick, I'm sorry to interrupt the video that I just made here. Um, I'm about to end it, but I wanted to give you guys a little FYI, a little information for you guys on the cable. The reason why the cable or the switch didn't want to show up on the screens um, when I uh, when I was doing the video, the screens turned blue, was because I had the switch cable here um, set this way. Now, I'm not sure if this is just from the manufacturer that they just um, didn't properly put the, uh, this cover on the correct way. 
but I had to um, have the cable instead of like this showing in front of the screen I had to reverse it like this um, and um, that was this was the only way I can get it to work with the switch uh, in dock mode so um, when you use your switch if it doesn't work one way and you don't see any signal at all on your TV switch it the opposite way and connect it back and it should work now another thing that you definitely don't want to do for safety reasons and also for your own product you know um, preservation or whatever you want to do if you want to make sure you, your stuff lasts long don't use this wire even though this is a more preferred longer wire don't use the wire um, for the power for the switch or reversal meaning use this cable part for the switch and the switch cable for this adapter part because what's going to happen is you're going to end up frying this adapter or worse probably breaking your Nintendo switch so if you don't want to do that just connect them exactly how it is described here on plugging them in this one here doesn't matter polarity wise because I've already tried it out it still works no matter what but the one inside of the dock there or inside of the cubby that one does matter so again if you see no video footage on your TV just reverse the cable from one end take it out reverse it plug it back in and that should work so now that I cleared this out we're gonna go ahead and go to the ending of the video where I explain about making sure that before you turn off your vehicle if you're gonna have them in here to please make sure to um, turn off your Nintendo switch from the switch itself through the menu like you would normally turn it off or put it on sleep mode and then go ahead and power down your car because you don't know if um, automatically removing the power from the switch while it's in dock mode would do any kind of damage to the switch as well so this is just you know to take precautions but uh, let's get back to the ending part of the video and this will be it again you guys have any questions make sure you comment down below uh, this um, product was $69.99 at La Cura Sao in downtown Los Angeles but other places like walmart.com has it and you could even search online through google.com under uh, bionic tv links for nintendo switch exactly like that on the search engine and you should find other uh good sellers with good reputation and stores where you can buy this product uh other than that let's get back to the video peace okay one more thing real quick um before you turn off your uh your engine and your car to prevent any damage going into your switch uh, make sure that you turn it off from the system itself to avoid any damage once you have it off from the system then um, you should be able to uh, switch it back to Roku and once it switches back to Roku you're all good there then you can go ahead and turn off the system because with the Roku it's meant to turn off that way but that, not the Nintendo switch so um, once it's off you can go ahead and reach in go ahead and grab your switch disconnect your wire and now you can bring your switch back into the inside of the house and you're good to go so anyways that's about it for this video um i really hope you guys enjoyed it if you have any questions about the bio uh, bionic tv links for the nintendo switch please comment down below and uh thank you very much for watching